You're watching Alabama's WVUA News at 6. Next on WVUA News at 6, tensions are running high over plans for a housing development in Northport. We'll have details. Plus, before you head out to fly the friendly skies, find out which airline comes out on top for customer service. Good evening. We're glad you're with us. I'm Philip Coleman. I'm Janie Wallace in for Lynn Brooks. It's been nearly eight weeks since the powerful tornado roared across Tuscaloosa County. And for some, the cleanup in the Holt area seemed to be at a standstill for weeks. But the signs of progress are beginning to appear. WVUA Lindsay Price has more in tonight's Top Story. It's kind of like nobody knew anything about uh, the Holt and Crescent Ridge area. That's how Holt property owner Troy Jones felt in the days and weeks after the April 27 tornado. The storm destroyed the mobile home park on Jones's land. Nearly eight weeks later, Jones says change is happening. We're making lots of progress. Uh, it still looks uh, a little rough, but uh, I think we're getting there. It's, it's slow. It's, it's been a heap of stuff to remove. Now that debris cleanup is well underway here in Holt, people are starting to move mobile homes back into neighborhoods. A lot of these people want to come back right where they were at. They don't want to go anywhere else. This is home to a lot of them. I wanted to come back. My husband did and He said, no, let's go change places. And I said, no, I'm not. This is my home. So this is where I'm going to come back home. Some residents say it's easier to be back in the place they used to live simply because of their strong relationships with neighbors. So we just have to take baby steps and one step at a time and see what goes on and we're going to have each other to lean on. So anything we need, there's another person that's going to be right there beside us to help us out with it. Even though Holt has a long way to go, residents say they see signs of hope. It's um, uh, kind of touching to see uh, the folks that are working and the folks that come in here from other places helping. As for the future, Tuscaloosa County Commissioner Gary Youngblood says the commission is putting together a committee to help decide how Holt will be rebuilt. In Holt, Lindsay Price, WVUA News. And WVUA is covering Tuscaloosa County where one person has died in a fatal wreck. According to Alabama State Troopers, this happened on Gainesville Road in the community of Romulus. Officials say around 2 o'clock this afternoon, one person was ejected from an SUV when it overturned. The Romulus, Fosters, and Ralph Volunteer Fire Departments responded to the scene. The name of the victim has not been released. Officials say the wreck may have been weather-related, but they are still investigating the cause. Right now, Tuscaloosa City school leaders are interviewing the next two candidates in their search for superintendent. The board interviewed the first two candidates on Monday night, John Scanlon from Rochester, New York, and Dr. Dexter Suggs from Indianapolis, Indiana. Some of the key issues for the Tuscaloosa City Board includes the working relationship between the superintendent and the board, communication, and how they will handle the first year on the job. WVUA spoke with the two candidates about their plans for the first year on the job if they are offered the position of superintendent. I would do a lot of uh, listening and a lot of uh, learning. Uh, in the process, also a lot of planning. Uh, the process will pr pretty much go meeting with most of the stakeholders, developing a personal 100-day plan. This is what I plan to do in the first 100 days of my employment. That transition plan, if you will, will look at a number of things, both the, the data that's out there now about the performance of the district, performance of students, uh, in comparison to their peer groups across the state and in the nation. In addition to Scanlon and Suggs, the board is interviewing Tony Burks from San Diego, California, and Paul McKendrick from Lynchburg, Virginia. That's tonight. On Wednesday, board members will interview Barry Carroll from Athens and Deborah Pinkett from Marietta, Georgia. Meanwhile, WVUA is covering tonight's meeting and we'll have much more tonight on WVUA News at 10.
Emotions ran high at Northport City Council meeting over a proposed housing complex. The issue? Developer David Morrow wants to build low-income housing on 38th Street. Some residents told WVUA the development could bring more crime to their neighborhood and could affect the value of their property. Morrow has previously sued the city of Northport and each Northport City Council member citing discrimination. The council moved in favor of annexing the land to have more say in the development process. Morrow says construction will begin in the next 60 days. Tornado survivors have less than a week to apply for assistance from FEMA and the Small Business Association. Monday, June 27th is the deadline to apply for disaster assistance from FEMA. The Small Business Association is also asking people to apply by that same date as well. Officials are encouraging everyone to apply even if they think they may not qualify for the loan. And here are some important phone numbers for assistance. If you would like more information from FEMA, call 1-800-621-3362. And you can receive more information from the Small Business Association by calling 1-800-659-2955. In Montgomery, thousands of dollars in campaign donations took center stage at the state's gambling corruption trial today. A woman who organized fundraisers for state representative Barry Mask testified. She said a representative from Milton McGregor's casino tried to buy all of the tickets to a fundraiser. There were 100 tickets priced at $50 each, but the event was sold out. McGregor's representative showed up anyway with two checks totaling $5,000 in campaign donations. McGregor is one of nine people accused of buying and selling votes on pro-gambling legislation. Now, defense attorneys say their clients never accepted any bribes.